So about a year ago, I finally took the time to build my dream workbench. I procrastinated for something like 20 years or more, and um, I can tell you that my biggest regret is that I didn't do it sooner because this workbench has revolutionized the way I work. I'm just more inspired, I'm having more fun, and I think I'm even doing better work. Um, so if you're thinking about building a good high quality workbench like this, definitely do it, don't keep putting it off. That's my advice. So today in this video, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about this workbench, about a little of my thinking, why I love it, um, take you on a tour of some of my favorite features, and um, I'm gonna be sharing with you a couple of videos that are from a step-by-step -step course on how to build this workbench that includes blueprints and things like that. And I'll tell you more about that if you stick around to the end. I'll put a link in the description as well if you're interested in building this exact workbench or if you just wanna use it as a starting point uh, for a customized workbench that's perfect for you and your woodworking style. So let's go take a look at this bench and uh, I'm excited to show you some of the great features. Okay, so let's start just um, taking a look at some of the cool features of this workbench and why I love it so much, why it's been so great for me. Like I mentioned before, I actually built this workbench about a year ago, so I've been using it for quite a while. And that was really sort of important to me because everything we do here in the Luthier's Edge, um, I, I do my best to make sure that I'm not sharing some sort of like new hot trend, but rather, um, take something and test it, make sure it works for me first, and then bring it to you guys when I've tried it and learned some things and made some mistakes. Um, I think that adds a lot of value, I hope, to you guys and uh, makes these courses really help you get better results faster and, and enjoy it more and things like that. So, um, so these different features that I've been using for a while that are amazing, let's just start with some of the bigger things, like for example, the four inch thick workbench. Uh, out of the, the work top that's four inches thick. That is probably, I mean, just the heft and the mass of this workbench is probably the key thing, uh, probably above all the bells and whistles um, that makes it just absolutely amazing and wonderful to work on. It's just, you know, being a guitar maker especially, you're so used to listening to things and like tapping the wood and all that, and a day doesn't go by that I'm not um, just enjoy it when I get up to this workbench and I hear what it sounds like and how solid it is. And it's sort of this background note of uh, just real solid resonance that's underneath everything I'm doing all day long. And it's just really nice. So that's kind of a, a side note, I suppose, but the thickness. So um, we'll mention this a few times, but you might wanna customize this in different ways. I recommend you go for four inches thick if you can. It's just awesome to have it that thick. And it's smooth. Another thing is that it's four inches thick all the way across, which is nice. There's no like ledge underneath or something so I can clamp things perfectly because it's just the clamp can slide right in and it's consistent. That's really important. That's something my old workbench didn't have and it was very annoying. Um, the, let's talk about the fact that it's a split top bench for a second. And um, so it is a two part, so it's a, there's two actual workbench tops with a centerpiece in the, cent in the middle. And this is a Rubo, what most people refer to as a Rubo split top design. Now a Rubo bench traditionally has some fancy vices and things like that, which I did away with as I mentioned before. Um, but let me just show you a little bit of how this sort of split top thing works and why it's so great, just in case you're hearing about this for the first time. So the first part, and you could do this without a split top, I suppose, but um, I went ahead and put some tool slots in here. Now, sometimes people will put tons of tool slots all the way down. Um, the sky's really the limit on what you wanna do here, but they've, turned, they've uh, proven to be very handy in that I can just take a tool and set it in there when I'm not using it, rather than having lots of tools laid out all over the workbench, which you may have done what I've done before and accidentally set a guitar on top of something. Um, so it's just another way to keep my work surface clean and organized and it's pretty handy for, for
fret saws and things like that. The second cool thing is that you can actually lift this out. The way I've designed it, which you'll see in the blueprints, um, is I don't have to pull it all the way out. I just lift it up and I just slide it over a tiny bit. And what it does now is it stays up. So now I can use this as a planing stop. So if I wanna grab a piece of wood and put it on here, grab my hand plane and I've got a planing stop. Sometimes it's useful for uh, aligning jigs or uh, there's just a, tons of different uses for that. The other great thing is I can actually take this whole thing out like this. I can remove the entire piece and I can set this aside. I'm just gonna put it here for now. And now I have a slot down the middle of my workbench. And what this is really, really cool for is indexing jigs. Um, if you have a jig, you know, you could normally on a lot of benches, you can make a bench hook to lay on there, but now you can have a bench hook that actually indexes on both sides. You can have all kinds of different things. I'll show you the thing that I use the most though, is the fact that I can now clamp in the middle. So this is my, <laughs> This is my big side bender. <clears throat> and I used to always have a problem with this before when I would put it on because I could only clamp it on the edges. But with this split top, it's just so much easier when you've got a place to clamp out in the middle. So the sky's really the limit as to all the different combinations of clamping, custom jigging, um, you can just really just let your imagination run wild about different ways that you can use the workbench now to interact and interface with a lot of the ways that you're building your guitars or whatever you're working on. It's pretty cool. I mean, something I've used quite a bit too is I hook up a, sometimes I can put a vacuum in there and just run, stick the vacuum up from the bottom and it's just a place where it's pulling dust down. It's simple, kind of crude, but... Uh, works pretty well and helps control some, a little bit of dust when I'm carving and things like that. And there's many, many more ways to improve that and, and do all kinds of different things with it. So um, let me show you a couple other features. Let's take a look at the dog holes. That's a pretty common feature, but it's also pretty awesome. Why didn't I pick something smaller Ugh, to show you up there? <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at them down here. So I went ahead and included in the blueprint, which is part of the course, um, I just included four dog holes on each side and I show how to drill those and all that kind of stuff, which is really important to get that right, to drill it in the right way because you don't want to mess up your brand new workbench that you're working on. Um, and I came up with a great way to do it. So you'll see that later in the course. And um, I just used, these are just pieces of oak dowels and they've been working great. Like I said, I've been using this for about a year now and they still fit really nice and um, they work great. But one other quick thing I wanna show you about this is a really cool thing that I've found called a Veritas Wonder Dog. And this thing here makes it really easy to do things like, you know, clamp, let's say a fingerboard, kind of like this. I can just throw a clamp on the bench here. It's not really on there. It's just a, a stop basically there and then I can turn this and it's like a little vise. And now this thing can get pretty stable when you clamp it down tight. So, so many different uses for this. I use this little thing all the time simply just to hold the thing still so I can do layouts and, and other stuff like that. So really, really handy. Um, the dog holes are amazing. I'm gonna show you two other, two, yeah, no, three other things that I'd use the dog holes for, for, for guitar making that are really cool. I think you're gonna like. All right, let's move this. I feel like I'm on an infomercial or something almost. <laughs> um, let's get this out of the way. Let's go ahead and put this back on too. One other thing that you'll see uh, when you take the course is um, my process for making sure that these things fit really well. And you can see that after a year of all the seasons and everything, just check out how nice and snug this is. Just snaps right into place and um, just makes it really feel solid and high quality, you know? So 
Another thing I wanna show you is the holding cradle. So when I'm making guitars for binding processes and you know other types of things, I really like to have my holding cradle. In my old workshop, I had to have a dedicated bench where this one of these was always mounted there. But here now, um, I have a really simple way. I can just pop this in place. And then I have a washer and a really nice little um, screw uh, handle that I got that I found too as well. It's made out of solid aluminum, it's really great. And this little thing, so you saw just while I'm talking in a matter of seconds, I can set up holding cradle to put my guitar body in here and I can hold it in any position I want, which is really great. And of course, this can happen on any of the dog holes. And you could probably do it in one of these tool slots as well if you wanted to, but anyway, tons of flexibility there. You could even rig it up to move it up and down through the centerpiece as well. So on and on and on, there's so many things. I'm gonna show you two more of my favorite things. And then I think that should be enough because there's the, the possibilities are limitless of how you could make this work for guitars or anything else that you build. So um, while you're working on your guitar, you might need a little bit of light. So let me show you how I take care of that. So this is typically the one that I like to use, but you could use any of the dog holes. Uh, I pop that out and then I just have a little brass. This is actually a thrust bearing and um, it's a three quarter inch outside diameter. It just pops right into the dog hole and then it lets my light slide right in. Now I've got a flexible work light anywhere that I need it. I can move it to any spot on the bench that has a dog hole and um, just one other really cool thing. Okay, one last, one last thing I gotta show you that's, these are some of my most used like daily go-to features. But um, again, I'm hoping that this is sort of kickstarting your creativity and your ideas on what you can do with your bench once you, once you build it. So let's say that I need a vise somewhere on the bench so that I can hold some guitar parts and do some work on it, maybe while something's drying over there or something like that. I can just pop this dog hole out and take my vise and set it right in. Pretty simple. Now I've got a vise that I can position anywhere I want on the bench uh, in a matter of seconds, really. And uh, if I wanted to, I could add another light over here and you get the idea. So hopefully this is giving you tons of ideas on um, you know, the different ways you can use the bench. There's also a lower shelf um, that is really handy as well. I guess I should show you that real quick before we wrap up this video. So this space under the workbench is very valuable. And if you lay things out right, you can make it increase your workflow quite a bit because you don't have to walk so far to get the things you use most often. For me, I just have my most used clamps and my Festool vacuum and sander. Those are all handy things that I can just reach under the bench and grab in just a matter of seconds and keep working. Okay, so I think that wraps it up for the basic workbench tour. And um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully you're as excited as I am about the possibilities and the, all the different creative things that become available to you to integrate the workbench into your workflow. And um, I find it really inspiring. And it's also just helped me have a lot more fun and enjoy my work, which translates to doing better, more creative, more artistic, more authentic work. And you know, that's really the goal. Okay, as promised, and in case you're interested in any more information about the step-by-step -step course on how to build this workbench, um, it includes techniques, tools, all the materials, links to all that stuff, as well as some really detailed blueprints that you can download. And also very importantly, access to support in case you have questions, in case you need help, you run into things, that's very important. And that's a big part of the Luthier's Edge. But you can find out more about all that using the links below. And now I'm gonna show you a quick video, which is gonna give you a good feel for the class and what's included. All right, thank you so much for watching. Hope you'll subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next time.